Welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org. Our guest on Talk Art is Robin Stearns. And she is an oil painter, an entrepreneur, and an art educator who creates beautiful, impressionistic paintings that she calls cityscapes. So welcome, Robin. Thank you for having me, Sally. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get involved with oil painting? Um, well, I've always been doing art. Mm -hmm. uh, my education at MIT was in creative writing, but about seven years ago, I took an, uh, an oil painting class mm -hmm. at the community college, and I fell in love. Oh, good. And I kept taking classes and kept painting and eventually developed my own style, almost by accident. <laughs> but oh, really? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love with a painter, Jeremy Mann, who does mm -hmm. amazing cityscapes, and I tried to copy him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I just failed miserably. Oh dear. His colors, he tends to use, you know, Payne's gray and not a lot else. And um, I use a lot of color. You, I love your colors. <laughs> They're so beautiful, bright, vibrant. Thank you. I, I enjoy them. The more color, the better, really. Um, so, yes. So I started painting the city scrapes, um, going through a lot of experimentation, trying right. to get this technique to work. I ended up using, uh, first of all, I use a, a variety of different um, uh, resists, things okay. like oleo paste or oh. liquid to prevent the paint from sticking in certain parts. Mm. I always use uh, boards, you know, okay. panels, so mm -hmm. that you, you, know, you don't get streaks from the bending because you right. really work it pretty hard. Anyway, uh, what I'll do is I'll lay down some resist and then I'll take one of these brayers and I will use a thinned out layer of paint, usually with liquid, mm -hmm. sometimes oil, walnut oil, cover the brayer, and then I'll paint over the area. And then I will take a tool like this and scrape away a lot of the paint. And where the resist is, it creates these amazing textures. Right. And so that's the foundation of the painting. Then I go through and do more layers where I carve out you know, the shadows and, you know, find all the neat spots that can be developed. And I'll do that using a lot of this scrapers. kind of a tool. Yeah, smaller scrapers and all different sizes. So what does it look like when it starts out? You have an example. I do. It, this is a project that I've just started. It's a little bit more in my newer style. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing you can see a little bit down here is I ruler out basically where the buildings will be and okay. the dimensions. Then I will... Uh, apply a layer of leaf. This is silver leaf. Um, it's getting bigger and bigger with the leaf, I right. <laughs> like the sparkles. Then using one of these brayers, I paint the, the sky in. Okay. What'll happen next is there are all kinds of buildings here that you can see in, in high resolution. And I'll, I'll paint those in. This painting's a little bit different because it's going to actually have a three-dimensional element of oh. a freeway sticking out here. Interesting. So you're building on, <laughs> well, yes. expanding your ideas. Excellent. We'll see how it works. So, it's always an experiment. You also teach a little bit. So a tell us a bit. little bit about that. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so I have a school. I started SCART Academy about three years ago. So what is it called? SCART Academy. SCART. Okay. SCART Academy stands for the San Carlos Art Academy. Right. Which is where I started the school. Um, but about, oh, almost two years now, we moved to Belmont. Okay. And mm -hmm. I don't like the name Bart Academy. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we let, skirt. kept it skirt. So SC so, Art. That's excellent. And my daughter, Shannon Stearns, and I teach. Uh, sometimes my son as well now, excellent. Thomas. So we have, it's a real family business. Um, we have regular, mostly, um, our after-school classes are for children, right? and they go from ages uh, first grade to eighth grade usually. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some high schoolers who come in for more of a private lesson, which 
Shannon does the teaching part, and then we have uh, adult classes on Thursday mornings. Well, excellent. So you brought in some images of your city scrapes. Yes, Let's did. take a look at those now. Okay. So I picked this one to bring because this was the first one that sold. <laughs> and Beautiful. I really liked it. Um, the technique was very fresh at that point. So, you know, I hadn't, so there's no like a, of the gold leaf or anything. It's all straight up painting and trying to, to manipulate everything with the rollers. Um, this is of New York, and this is where I, I realized how much I liked working on paintings that take uh, images in the rain, just because you have all the reflections and the, the, the light just bounces around. Right. And, and the that's, scraping really works well with that. Yes, it yeah. That, that shows that reflective type. It's really beautiful. Thank Especially you. with that red in the middle. Nice. Uh, the <laughs> So that, that's pretty much where it started. Um, there were actually a couple that came before this, but they were failures. So <laughs> this is one of my favorites, uh, Jackson Street. Um, the interesting thing about this is I really started to, to experiment with the resists in this one. The, if you look in the sky, and it doesn't show particularly well in the image, but you can see that the Bay Bridge is is in there, but yeah. it's more of a shadow, and there are birds flapping around in the sky, and that was done by applying the resist and then painting in the sky and then scraping it off, mm -hmm. and it gave this cool ghostly effect that really, it made the painting. Like, none of the buildings, nothing was in it, but there was that bridge in there, and everybody was like, oh, oh, this is a cool painting. It, so Nice. And you get such straight lines with the brayers and the scraping. Do you use a brush at all to paint? I definitely use a brush at the end. Um, once, you start, once I start putting in the vehic vehicles and the details, if there's people, sometimes um, there'll be some brush work, um, but it's, it's at the very end. This one is trolley car. I have discovered that people in San Francisco really like to buy paintings with trolley cars, so Excellent. it's on my list of things to <laughs> do more of. This one was fun because, well, actually it was terrifying. After painting the entire thing, I needed to go in and get that, the raindrop lights, you know, how it's reflecting all right. over the place, and I, thinned out some paint and I stood back and I had this completed painting that was right. fine that <laughs> yep, <laughs> and I, I know the threw paint at it. That was really hard. Works. I really like the way you have some sort of central focus but that the sky in the background is such an important part of your compositions. It's really interesting to look into I think. So this is not my standard painting at all. This is this, this unusual um, project that we'll be demonst demonstrating. But it starts with uh, this painting of my studio. And so this is pretty much what my studio looks like with some paintings. And um, what we did was we digitized this painting and created 3D worlds where you could go in and explore. Actually, the, I should step back one, one step. Mm -hmm. My family, for years, we've been talking about the idea of being able to go to a museum and see a painting and step into that painting. You know, you right. see a beautiful, you just want to be a part of it. And my husband works in virtual reality. He has been doing so for a long time, since oh, pretty excellent. much it started. And um, so we collaborated on this project after seeing your project. And oh, well, thank you. it worked out pretty cool. It's kind of an interesting thing. So anyway, the basis of it is this painting. Okay. And then we created the three paintings within this painting in order to be able to associate them with existing worlds. Um, so we use Mexico, which was developed by another person in Howard's company. 
we used uh, the Yosemite because, again, somebody in his company had developed it, and the Sistine Chapel. Um, we ended up having to create our own world. So this is the Mexico painting you were referring to? This is the Mexico painting. So it's a traditional uh, city scrape, just like all my other work. Um, and it's the basis for the, um, it's a small village <laughs> that, that uh, Jasmine had created in 3D. Okay. And you will see that the village has grown <laughs> And my painting hasn't kept up because it's not quite as live, but it's neat. It, it's interesting cool. how things in, on, in world change rapidly. Right. And the stagnantness of, of the artwork is interesting. Right. You know, a moment in time. Exactly. Like the Impressionists. Right. This is Yosemite. This is kind of an interesting piece because the mountains are actually collaged um, using music. Um, the big mountain is Beethoven and the smaller one is Haydn. <laughs> and the reason I did this was we had a flood in our house and my piano was destroyed. Oh. And the good news is the insurance company replaced it with a brand new one. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> but a lot of my music was ruined too. So. So I put it to good use. Used it in your art. Excellent. And this is the Sistine Chapel, or I call it Sistine Chapel, but really Vatican. This one has a whole lot of the gold um, leaf underlying it because, you know, God and all that. You're right. It's very, <laughs> so. It was very shiny, and the reflections are beautiful in the water. And so the nice, the interesting thing is that we had to create our own world of Sistine Chapel because of some technical issues, so. Yeah, well, let's take a look at your demonstration of the interactive art exhibit. Okay, so this is Perspectives. Here's my studio. And as you can see, um, it's a, this is a 55-inch touch screen. So it's basically like a huge iPad. And when you touch things, things happen. I'm not sure how the sound is coming through. Um, so some of them are just little <laughs> Easter eggs that, right. that are there to engage people. But the idea is to get people to actually uh, try to touch the paintings. Oh, look, it goes right to the painting. And it gives you the purchasing information. And we're going to work on how to sell things through this. Nice. And then if you touch the painting one more time, it will bring you into a virtual 3D world. And this world, this world is the Sistine Chapel, so you can go through and explore it. Ah, now I'm going too fast. Oops, you went off into <laughs> We'll have to go back. Oh, but if that's you, okay. And then uh, this one, we've got something weird going on that it's huge. There we go. So now this one is Yosemite, right. and it, it brings you into a, a world that right. is actually Banff, but I didn't know it at the time, so I painted Yosemite. And you can walk around and explore the National Park. Wow. And you can see how it's a three-day world, and you can just walk around. And there's things that you can, can do. We should slow down a little. Um, it looks like we're going to fall into the big hole. That Don't could be in interesting. Hole. Goodbye. <laughs> but no, you just walk down in there. It, That's cool. It hurts a lot less when you're in <laughs> when you're virtual <laughs> reality. Yes. Exactly. But so this is, you know, a beautiful thing. One of the things that's exciting is sometimes there's other people who are in the park who are in their their. Um, I forgot the word. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, right. This one is Mexico, and if we go into Mexico, this is one of the more elaborate worlds oh, that Jasmine's that. been building, and we can go in, and she put a lot of cool toys in her world. And I'm looking for one that I've seen. Oh, it's, here it is, here, the piano, and you can go play the piano. <laughs> Very cool. 
and now if we go up here, whoops, too far. There's this little dance thing. Come on. Well, I'm not finding it. Why am I not finding it? Anyway, you can see that there's a whole lot of things that can happen. She's got these bubbles going, and every now and then you see a person in here, and you can talk to people. You know, so it makes Did it into. Did you paint the backgrounds as well, or is, it looks similar to the colors that you use? <laughs> Doesn't it? But yeah. no, she did that. She, this I did not create. Okay. Uh, we, we had a very limited time thing, and so we, we picked worlds that we could paint, kind of working nice. backwards. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. So, um, cool. So that's about it. Excellent. So let's go back to the beginning part of it again. Uh huh. Um, show us the Sistine Chapel. Okay. So you can look up at that ceiling and actually oh! go through this. You go. You're going. <laughs> I don't to know why I keep doing that. <laughs> Anyway. Cool. Well, that's a really interesting idea for interaction. So we're just trying to, to develop this, right. to get an idea for what people can do. Excellent. And uh, there's, you know, obviously you're really supposed to have the, the Oculus sort of deal. Oh, the deal. VR goggles, yes. But we wanted something that could work in an, in an art exhibit. Right. And nobody's going to walk up and just put on the goggles, but people oh. will walk up and play with the, play the with this. TV. Excellent. So. Well, you have some more images that we can take a look at for your um, next round of painting. So let's take a look at those now. Okay. Paxton Gate. So this looks like a little bit of a different style. Tell me how it's changed. So this is very much uh, my, uh, my portrait style. Um, but it's kind of like a cityscape like, that happens inside. I don't know if you know what Paxton Gate is, but it's a store in San Francisco. Oh, no, haven't been there. And they, oh, it's on Valencia Street. They have the coolest stuff, just like geodes and, and bones and fossils. And oh, cool. So it's lovely. So it inspired this painting where we have the, they have a lot of the bell jars. And instead of having bones in it like they had, we put in a ballerina. And the reason we did this was so that this is, this is what we intend to do for our next VR project, okay. where uh, we have a friend who is a dancer, and we want to record her dancing and have her dancing inside there in, oh, wow. in the bell jars. So that's our next big project that we hope to, to finish. Cool. Uh, this is Market Street. Um, the reason I included this one is that it has, um, this is when I started using the gold leaf and the underlying the leaf with it. Okay, so tell me a little bit about how that works with this finished paint. Which part is the gold? Uh, so the wet part of the street, not the orange part, but the, mm -hmm. you know, it, it looks kind of dark in certain areas, and then if you turn the painting a little so it catches light, it, all of a sudden it, it, it explodes in light. Oh. So, so as you move past the painting, the light changes because, oh, very nice. And in fact, you know, I've had people at Open Studios take my paintings outside so that they could play, play with, with them and <laughs> see right. which one they like best because, so I had started this for a holiday party at the gallery house, but it has become something that I do in almost all my paintings now. Very interesting. This is one of my more recent works. Um, you can see my style's changed a little bit. It's a little more formal, I would say. Um, it has a trolley. So yeah, it's old. beautiful. So, <laughs> so tell us a little bit about why you changed and what you see in the changes. So I'm not sure. I feel like I'm doing it exactly the same, but this organization seems to happen. 
Uh, the lines have gotten cleaner, but it's still the same technique. Um, and it has just tra transitioned. Um, part of it is that I've changed my color palette. Mm. This is part of the new color palette, which is, you see a lot of brown in there? Yes. The brown is not brown. It is purple mixed with uh, uh, Indian yellow. Oh, And it glows. And most of the dark colors in this are purple. And I, I, it just does something magical to the light. It just softens how the, how the, the paint flows. It's a smoother paint in general, so it, it works, you know. I so just, are you still scraping as I, much? I scrape and I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all the I techniques, think. the roller ring. Um, there's a, you can see that there's, you know, the whole Bay Bridge in the back yes. is all put in with the with the gold, silver leaf in this case. And then okay. you can't really tell from the picture so much, but if you see it live, the windows where there are bright reflections, flashes mm -hmm. of light, there's gold leaf and silver leaf and so on. So nice. it, it really sparkles and the, and the trolley car uh, sparkles as well. Okay. It looks like there's a lot of painted detail in these. Oh, this is different. Yeah. Although this went just the opposite, where it was, um, so this was based not on a picture I took, but uh, my daughter was going on a date with her boyfriend, <laughs> and he has a terribly dirty windshield on his car at the time. And she, she says, but this looks like one of mom's paintings and took out oh. and shot. <laughs> she says, you have to go there and take a picture, but I just painted it from this and I loved the smokiness of it. The, right. You know, it just has this certain aura. And uh, yeah, so what is it? Why is it called the bean? That's my husband names all my paintings. Oh, he does. <laughs> <laughs> and the that's actually the Transamerica building, but it's on the side, so you don't right. see the wings. And while well, you can see that it's the building. If you look at it long enough, it looks more like a beam of light coming down. Okay. So it, it's a play on what's going on. And then, of course, there's beams of light going everywhere. So that, that's beautiful. Thank you. Again, this is, this is very much in, in, um, similar to the, the blue one that I showed you that's in right, progress. Just started. And um, so there is a lot of silver leaf. And then I went in and I painted all uh, the sky. And my daughter and I decided maybe that was the transition, that I don't actually paint cityscapes, I paint skies. <laughs> right, well, <laughs> I've noticed that. It was definitely one of the focal points. So that was done, and then I just put in the detailed buildings, and that goes relatively quickly. Um, and I just loved the painting. I liked the way it worked together and the softness of it. Um, I like the so smoky. What types of paint are you using? Does it, you said it changed and it flows. What, you, this is oil paint? It still? is oil paint, but when you use Indian yellow, it tends to be, it's a transparent paint and it tends to have a lot of flow. And I use brands that are more flowy now. Mm -hmm. um, also with this dioxin, I can't remember, the purple. It's, yes. it's also a transparent color that has a lot of flow to it. Um, I used to use a lot of like burnt umber and raw umber, and I find that dirt colors in general tend to be kind of stiff. Right. Um, so I've kind of eliminated them almost entirely from my works. Hmm. Um, so, so you mix the browns now instead. I mix cool. the browns and um, I use more reds. Um, I use almost no blue. Uh, the only blue I usually, I'll throw in like little bits of um, blue at the end for highlights, but I, I try to avoid blues in general. Hmm. This is one of my favorites. Um, and it has some blue. <laughs> and it has some blue. <laughs> I don't know. I'm which actually really nice. it came beautiful in. perspective. And you do all the perspective with a brayer. Right. So oh. first I ruler everything so that I know where the the 
so that the geometry actually turns out right. I hate right. it when I end up drawing and then a building is crooked or something. Right. So that gives me a guideline, but then I use the brayer and it gives the softness so that I don't, my, when I started painting, it was my general nature to just be very picky and do details and very precise and everything just so. And I would do a whole painting like this and it would look terrible. It would look <laughs> harsh. <laughs> Nobody did. <laughs> so I um, so I started using the brayer thing right. and that softness just drew people in, you know, and it, it fascinated me because I love different processes. I love trying different uh, chemicals and, and pores and all different things that in fact, we do a lot of experimenting at the at the school, mm -hmm. and then after after it works out for the students, then I will take the technique and use it on one of my paintings. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> beautiful. So tell us where you we can see your art. So right now, I have a solo exhibit at the Fog Museum, Fog Museum Fog Gallery. Gallery. <laughs> which is uh, in the sunset in San Francisco. In San Francisco, well, perfect. Your San Francisco paintings <laughs> must be there. Yes, and it's almost exclusively San Francisco. So that'll be there till the end of the month. Excellent. And, then, and can people play with your interactive exhibit there? It, it, not anymore. Oh, <laughs> it's taken okay. down for the duration. But um, we will have the interactive ex exhibit again at um, SVOS. OK, in May. And, and we will Where have. Where will you be? We have, uh, we host, our school hosts um, a big thing at the Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Belmont. In Belmont, okay. And so we'll have about 12 different artists who uh, display their works. Oh, and excellent. So a nice group show. Musicians, and it, it, it's neat because the whole community gets involved and Father Michael does a sermon about art and, you know, it's it's all. Oh, good. So it's a good community gathering. Yes. It's a special thing so and you mentioned the gallery house in Palo Alto yes and that's I'm a member there and we do every month we have a new painting hung and then in August I will be doing a duet show with Anne Lamborn so excellent well thank you so much for being here at Talk Art thank you wonderful show